what's going on so today begins the journey to starting a car dealership i'm going to document that process for the the process here on youtube and for those who are in the art of holding the corporate toolbox you're going to get all of the behind the scenes stuff so i want to start off with what happened today um because essentially I feel that this is going to be more profitable and today when I was doing the training I actually found a car dealership lot for rent or you know well let me tell you what happened uh, I went out there after the training and uh, talked to the owner he's been there since 1995 he's been there 26 years and I also found other car lots in the area and he go ahead and gave me the rundown but he said that Dorville is not a good place to do business and there is uh because essentially I have noticed that you see car lots grouped together and I know Peachtree Industrial I don't know if that's the Cab County or Fulton County but there's a number of car dealerships on Peachtree Industrial uh, new used whatever so I know that that works in that corridor and you know I'm going to actually talk to some more people because it's, it's really interesting years and years ago I used to have a, a retail shop and I was running into all kinds of problems with DeKalb County so I know that when you have a physical business and you have to deal and there there's two parts I got to get license from the state of Georgia and I got to get a business license from whatever county that I set up in so there there's many steps I got to get a license I got to get bonded I got to get uh, a business occupational license from whatever uh, jurisdiction whether it's the Cab County Cobb County or whatever so I got some research to do but I'm gonna be documenting that journey here on this channel and I'm going to be doing the car stuff here. I was thinking about starting a new car channel and I'm just gonna go ahead and put that content here. So essentially, this week is a really busy week. Um, I got to go ahead and make a determination because I've noticed something else too, that a lot of the car dealerships are not in LLCs, they're in C-Corps. And I am pretty much just gonna go with an LLC. Uh, I don't understand what's going on with that, but I'm gonna do some investigation because I already have uh, Mac Daddy Trades, which all I have to do is update the articles of organization and I can do the dealership from that. So it is my intention since I got $150,000, I'm taking the $150,000 that is in my personal checking account and I'm gonna invest in this business. Now, why am I doing that? I want to show you guys the power of having money. Uh, from what I've seen, there have been many successful car dealerships that started with literally one car or two cars and they just flipped that money up into a full dealership. and. I've also noticed that I was doing some research and there's one guy, he graduated the University of Georgia in 1989, okay? And he started his car dealership in 1989 and it is still going to this day. And I've been running into this. I've seen a lot of people start dealerships and they're still in business. So that's really interesting because um, I was for the Porsche, I'm getting some black rims and I was getting them today and the guy who was helping me, he used to be a service manager and he said, man, that's probably going to be one of the best businesses you ever did because when I was, he said, during the economic downturn, people repair cars, they don't trade them, they don't get new ones. And also, I know for a fact that a lot of people had their credit harmed. You know, and we're having this conversation over at Savage Finance because, you know, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to actually put this to the response, but even if you have an 850 credit score in the current economic environment, you're not going to be able to get 
worth of credit. This guy, he's like, he did it. And I told him in my response, I was like, look, you did this a while ago and he just confirmed that because you can't do it today. Right now, there are people with good credit, never missed a payment. They had their credit accounts closed. 70 million Americans had their credit accounts closed. And these were people who maybe have went over their credit limit a few times or actually just don't use the card. And there was a lot of cards that were closed. So essentially, I know for a fact, based upon the economics of the situation, that a lot of people will be having to go to buy here, pay here. The folks who lost their jobs, the folks who got evicted, folks who need good, dependable transportation. I'm going to do my best to get good, solid cars. I already have a theme of the type of cars I'm gonna buy. So essentially just getting people good, dependable transportation so they can go to work and not put them on a tremendously long payment plan. So I'm gonna have an 18 month payment plan and I'm gonna have a 24 month payment plan. 36 for maybe some of the more expensive cars as we get into that. But in the beginning, we're gonna have a very simple easy to understand business model and i will be coming here talking about this here on youtube so this week i either have to update the articles of organization or i have to create a new llc i gotta do some research on that and then what i'm gonna do since i have 150,000, now i'm gonna go ahead and give you the game the sauce i'm gonna go to wells fargo and get um secured credit products now why am i doing that because i have the money and i can go ahead and get these secured credit products and then use that and pay you know pay my own money back because i got enough money to put that money there because what i'm going to do is already know what is going to happen as i build this business out the first year i can pretty much get by with cash on hand pretty easily now, as I grow, I'm going to have a need because once again, let me go ahead and give you the game. I have no problem borrowing money for a business. Uh, if you borrow money over here and you use that money to make more money, that is smart. I have a big problem with personal debt. I think personal debt is dumb. I think it is stupid. And it's one of the worst things you can do as an entrepreneur. I, at the moment, have absolutely zero personal debt and I'm gonna keep it like that. Now, what I'm getting ready to do is load up on the business debt, because essentially I have, because I have the 150,000 in the bank, I have a Divi charge card with a 30-day credit limit, let's call it a 30-day credit limit, where I have access to that, between that and the Wells Fargo card, literally another $175,000. But the thing is with the Divi charge card, I gotta pay that back. So if I can go ahead and flip, you know, go ahead, buy a car, flip it, and pay Divi back very quickly, then I will do that. So I gotta see how long it's gonna take me. So essentially, I have at my disposal 150,000 cash, because I'm not, uh, the money that is going in the corp, the disruptive asset, that's money I'm saving for the apartment complex. So I'm not touching that. So I have 150,000 cash and 175,000 credit. So I've got plenty of financial firepower to get this started, but I'm going to operate this as if I don't have any money. I'm not just gonna be blowing money. You know, I'm gonna look for a good, um, solid location. And I'm gonna start, start, I'm gonna start talking to car dealers. Uh, you know, this gentleman, he, he told me a lot because essentially I feel that he's at a moment where he wants to retire and that's why he's selling it. He was asking for 1.1 million. And essentially, if I wanted to, I have a feeling that I could have like said, hey, I can give you 150,000 for your current inventory and we work out a payment plan. I think he would have went for it. But um, the, the, the Doraville, that whole, cause essentially I would have to take over his dealer's license. I, I would have to buy the business and then requalify as a dealer and get my dealer's license. And essentially he would be retired and with $150,000 
and then I would have to pay him a whatever per month. I don't know if I want to do that right now because part of it is very attractive because I would actually own the land. And after a certain point, because $150,000 down, that would leave me a note of 900, let's say 900,000 over 10 years uh, with like, you know, some interest. So that'd be like a $90,000 a year, uh, about 8,000 a month is what I would have to pay in terms to buy that, that land in that dealership. And I don't really know because you know it, where it is, it's, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but this is gonna be in the back of my mind because essentially that is an option, but essentially I'm going to, because also where I live, I don't want to have to be driving all over creation to get to the dealership. So my next spot to research is going to be Cobb, South Cobb Drive and Cobb County, because most parts of Cobb County I can get to in about 15 minutes. So we will be setting that up. And also the way that I'm going to set this up, I'm going to hire people right out the gate. I'm going to hire employees as soon as I get the license and I, I get approved and boom, I'm going to hire employees. I'm probably going to hire two employees, full-time employees, because essentially if I don't do that and I don't set this business up, because my goal is to set the business up to put protocol systems in place where I don't have to be there. See, because the dealership's going to be open Monday through Saturday. It's going to be closed on Sundays. And if I want to have a life, you know, in the first few months, that's cool. I, I'm working a lot, that's no problem. But going forward, if I don't build this correctly, it's gonna be a trap. And this is what has happened to a lot of small car dealers. They've gone out, they do everything, they don't have any help. And essentially, I would have to be the one going to the auction but I gotta teach someone how to go to auction and buy cars. So that's gonna be interesting because essentially it's like, here's a corporate credit card, go buy cars. And you know, we, 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 gotta, we gotta see how that's gonna go because I got to do that if I want to create a business that runs without me. I wanna be able to hop on the plane, go somewhere for two weeks, come back and I have money in my checking account because the business is making money. So we're gonna document the journey of starting a car dealership. This is something I have never done. And part of this is to prove my thesis. Because number one, I'm like, you know, this whole starting a business with absolutely no money, um, these folks are gonna find it really hard to scale, really, really hard to scale and it's gonna take years and years to scale. And what I'm saying is, where I will get in one year with 150,000 plus my available business credit, it will literally take them five to 10 years to get to that same spot that I can get into one year because I'm starting off with capital. And we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna be talking about where the money's spent. Uh, I, I have ideals about, you know, the employees wearing uh, T-shirts and, I have a, a logo, I got, we're gonna express, I'm gonna talk about all of that stuff and we're going to work that out here and you know, be sure to chime in and put down your opinions and what do you feel and all this other stuff because what we're going to do is we're gonna build out a company because essentially the other night when I was sitting here thinking about it, if I do this correctly, I can make more money from this car dealership than I do from YouTube. And I make a lot of money from YouTube. So if I go ahead and scale, let's, let's just go ahead, let's say four years in the future, four years in the future, and this dealership's doing like two to three million a year. And I still have the YouTube stuff going on. This is going to actually help me get to the apartment complex much quicker. You know, I, I was just sitting there and I was like, wow, this can actually cut 
the time for the apartment complex literally in half because I already got a good chunk of money in the corporate account for the apartment complex. I'm not touching that. That's already earmarked for the 10 to $15 million apartment complex. And what this dealership may actually help me do is like once I get enough money to put down on the apartment complex, I'm gonna do it. But, you know, let, let's go ahead and talk about that. I wanna have millions in the bank account so when I deploy millions, I still have millions. I don't wanna be broke. I, I have not been broke in 22 years. I don't like the sound of broke. I, I don't know, I, I just don't like it. So essentially, I need twice the amount of money that I currently have in the bank for me to pull the trigger on this apartment complex. So, you know, these are the financial management protocols of Savage Finance, you know, this is how I get down. So we're gonna be talking about this. We're gonna be talking about starting the business. And once again, if you want all of the juicy details, and when I say juicy details, I'm gonna show you profit and loss statements. I'm gonna show you accounting. I'm gonna show you credit card balance. I'm gonna show you everything in the art of holding and the corporate toolbox. And if you were on the training today, then you got a juicy thing that may happen real soon because essentially I was deploying my thought process on how to start businesses and it was very unique. This isn't some stuff you're gonna see on YouTube. This isn't some stuff you're gonna see. You can Google, this is real life business in action. Because, you know, I'm gonna prove my thesis by starting a business that I don't know nothing about, nothing about and I'm gonna make more money in this new business venture than I would if I took that same money and I threw it in the stock market or other investments. That's the thesis that I'm about to prove. And if I hit my numbers, because I've got all kinds of projections, but once again, until you get in business, projections don't mean nothing. I mean, they look good on paper and you can have a nice little business plan, but until you actually get in business, and actually start doing it and start making the money and seeing what the cash flow looks like, projections are pretty much meaningless. So we're gonna be talking about that and I'm gonna change up the content a little bit more because, you know, we're gonna start talking about cars because I have a lot of ideals and I'm gonna float one by here right now because once I get up and running, about six months into it, I may literally start renting cars, not through Toro, but on Craigslist, if you need to rent a car, I may just put 20 cars to the side and rent them. And I, that, because essentially this gives me a lot of things because I'm selling cars, I'm renting cars, and you know, because essentially I can do what relay, I can start my own app. I want you to think about this. I can create my own app push it on social media, and just rent cars here in Atlanta. Just rent cars here in Atlanta. There's a lot of people who need cars who cannot buy a car, but they can rent a car. So I can start buying the car, I can go to auction, I can buy cars, and I can rent them, and I can have a certain amount of cars over here that are rentals, then I have another set amount of cars over here that I am uh, selling, and I can just rent cars locally. You know, uh, and essentially, I don't have to split any money with Turo because I have enough because I can run radio spots. I can do social media advertising. I can hit influencers. There's a whole bunch of ways that I can put out the word that I am renting cars and essentially just advertise that. And essentially, I have a car dealership. I have my own rental agency and there's some other businesses. So essentially this car business is gonna morph into two businesses. It's gonna rent into a car dealership and it's gonna rent into, it's gonna turn into a car rental business. And essentially uh, one of the things I wanna do is put some advertising in the Atlanta airport to let people know. And once again, have it where we will come pick you up. Essentially, you know, it, it's, I got a lot to think about. I got a lot to think about. There's, there's so many ideals, but essentially 
Uh, this, my goal is to be up and running May or June. And I'm giving myself two months runway because I don't, I've never done this before. I don't know how this is going to go. So I'm giving myself plenty of time because the first thing is, one thing I do know is I got to have a location before I get my license. That I know. And then I got to find a county that has no problem with car dealerships because some counties, uh, I, I got to figure out where all of these car dealerships are on Peachtree Industrial. I don't know if that's Fulton County or DeKalb County. And like um, the guy I visited today, he was in Doraville. So we're not going to do Doraville. That's Doraville's a no-go because all these dealerships are in that area. They're, they're trying to get rid of this space. There's a reason in Doraville, because the guy told me he's literally seen businesses come in, spend 100, 200,000 renovating the business and Doraville's telling them, no, we don't want your business here. Uh, we're not about to do that. Um, so essentially, I might go ahead and get my broker's license first just to get the license to, to just get started because I mean, I could sell cars without a dealership. I could go ahead and just go to auction, start buying them. Uh, I found a place that I can rent parking lots. I can rent parking lots so I can find a place to store these cars for about 1200 bucks per month and I can operate that out of my house. I can have my assistant help me. So there, there's a whole bunch of options here. I don't have to do it a certain way. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be talking about this and um, yeah. So if you're new to the channel, you're going to see real business, real money in action. None of this fake template uh, stuff. You're not going to see that. So let me know what your thoughts and opinions are. I will see you guys in the next video. I don't know how many videos is going to be per week. Uh, whenever I do something that's related to this, I'll just sit down and shoot a video. So that's going to be dependent upon what I do and how I set it up. So if you really want the juicy, juicy details, you want to go ahead and enroll in the corporate toolbox. What we're doing is the two month fast start boot camp, and I'm putting all of the copious details of behind the scenes in the corporate toolbox and the art of holding. So you can see exactly what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And this could perhaps help you with your business getting real solid business information versus fluff entertainment and BS. So the link is below. The price will be going up in May. So let me know, go below, and I will see you guys in the next video.